Good morning and welcome to our service for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Do you notice anything different this week? There we are. We have our new blinds. We're really very really excited about that. Uh, we ordered them at the beginning of March, expecting to have to wait a couple of weeks and instead had to wait four months. So we're very pleased that uh, we had them fitted this week. So we hope you've had a good week too, maybe not quite as exciting as uh, us and our new blinds, but a good week nonetheless. This week uh, we have the second in our series of theme services on the theme of prayer. And this week we'll be thinking about adoration and Ian will be helping us think about that a little later. But now let's say together the opening responses. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, open our lips, teach us to pray, lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we sing our first song, which is Come, Now is the Time to Worship. time to worship come now is the time to give your heart come just as you are to worship come just as you are before Pray the Collect for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. <clears throat> Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry 
they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. <clears throat> and now we come to our time of confession. And this is a time just to place ourselves honestly and humbly before God, to admit our shortcomings and to receive the forgiveness that Christ bought for us on the cross. So we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And so may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we have our two readings. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verses 23 to 31. After they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard it, they raised their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in them, it is you who said by the Holy Spirit, through our ancestor David, your servant, Why did the Gentiles rage, and the peoples imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers have gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. For in this city, in fact, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, gather together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Acts, chapter 17, verses 22 to 28. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious, for as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I am going to pro proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands and he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart bring forth the teachings that God wishes to send forth. May my thoughts and words aid in the understanding of prayer 
and adoration in prayer. Today is the second in the series of sermons on the prayer course. Last week, the concept of why pray was looked at. This week, we explore the idea of adoration, what it means and why we do it. When we pray, we are relationship building. That is an intimate and personal relationship between you and God. We need to talk to our creator as we need to speak to friends and family because we are social beings. We were made that way from the beginning. Adam had Eve and they in turn had God. Everything they, every evening they would walk in the garden with God and talk to him. I expect it was like having two small children walking beside him. Children are an inquisitive bunch and they ask questions all the time and one can see that the first two humans would do the same thing. But at the same time they would adore God and stand in awe of him because of the created world around them and of course because he created them. In the Bible we know that people praise and rejoice in God's name many times. The phrase rejoice in the Lord appears 13 times between the Old and New Testaments. We are constantly reminded to rejoice in the Lord. In the Psalms we have at least two examples of this. One from Psalm 32 11, rejoice in the Lord and be glad. You're righteous. Sing all you who are upright in heart. And Psalm 97, verse 12. Rejoice in the Lord, you who are righteous, and praise his holy name. Each of these tells us to rejoice, but also to sing and to praise God. When we sing together, we are participating in adoration of God as a group, and we do so in communal prayer but we also need to do this individually. What do we have to do to practice adoration of God? And what does it do for us as his children? These are questions that Christians of all levels may ask, whether a beginner or an old pro. In the Lord's Prayer, we see adoration of him in the first few lines. And this was taught to us by Christ as something we should follow. We show adoration towards God in our prayers, not just because we are following a set system, but because we seek to enter into communion with God, to become aware of his presence. In Acts 17, verse 27, it says, God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he's not far from any one of us. Here we are reminded that we must reach out to God in our busy daily lives. We must come to him. During a day at work or at home or in whatever we do, the activity tends to take over and block everything else out. It can be others who are there distracting us. Teachers get that with students. Or it could be a report or it could be other work that busies us. The adoration of God removes the blocks and lets us focus so that we can pray about our day, our problem, and maybe even difficult individuals. By praying, we keep conversations between our Creator and us. By starting with adoration of God, we begin to clear the air and focus on the person that is important, not unlike clearing all other voices in a crowded room to listen to the one person that we are talking with. Prayer is a conversation, so we must enter that still, quiet place to commune with God. And we can hear his voice, calming and encouraging us to speak with a clear, pure heart. In Acts 4, 
Peter and John are seized and taken before the Sanhedrin. And when they are eventually released, we see the believers in Christ praying. This is in Acts 4.24. And it says, when they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. Even in communal prayer, the, the people bring themselves into God's presence by calling out to him, Sovereign Lord. They begin by bringing this focal point of God to all who are present. We can do this ourselves by saying something similar in our own private prayer. Having God as that focal point means we are coming into his presence and it gives us a sense of the divine. Touching this elusive matter of divinity will open us up to all that he wants us to hear. We must remember that prayer is not just bringing our troubles to our creator. He is also able to speak to us in that still, clear voice. In our open state, we can then discern his plan for our life and for the problems we may be seeking help for or even for difficulties we have not yet foreseen. As we see in Psalm 139, 16, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed and in your book they are were all written, the days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. With this, we can see that he already knows what we need before we speak. But he seeks to speak with us as much as we wish to speak to him and be in his presence. As it says in 1 John 4, 49, we love him because he loved us first. John also says that in this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins in 1 John 4.10. This wish for us to be with him is made in a promise earlier on in the Bible, and it appears in Leviticus 26.12. I will walk among you and be your God and you shall be my people. Although this was made to the Jews at Mount Sinai, it is as true for them as it is for us. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care, as it says in Psalm 95, 7. And it continues, today, if only you would hear his voice. This comes through adoration and prayer, bringing ourselves into his presence so we may listen to him. We can begin that conversation of prayer with our creator. In the words of Psalm 69, verse 5, O God, you know my foolishness, and my sins are not hidden from you. Thinking on this, I ask, Lord, that we take what has been said here and allow your will to lead us into the knowledge and understanding of prayer so that we are better able to communicate with you and for us to be able to hear your voice more fully and more clearly. Amen.
And now we say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And now Chris leads us in a time of prayer. Let's begin our time of prayer by remembering that we are speaking with our dear and loving Father in heaven, who longs to hear and answer our prayers, but also that he is Almighty God, the Lord of heaven and earth, whose power surpasses all that we can possibly imagine. So in reverence and awe, we dare to pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you that we can come to you to bring those things that are on our hearts this morning for the world, our nation and our friends and families. Father, we bring to you the crisis created by the coronavirus. We understand that in some countries, especially in Africa, the transmission rate is accelerating massively and has not yet reached its peak. We pray for the peoples of those countries left very vulnerable and unprotected by the high-tech medicine that has kept many of us alive in the past months. We pray for their governments that they would do all they can to provide for their peoples, but we know that it may be very little. And so we ask, Lord, that in your great mercy, you would powerfully act to save them. Almighty Father, we know that in the past you have saved your people from certain death, and we pray that you act in power now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, in our own lives we have anxieties and we are all facing difficulties of different kinds. Anxious for our health and that of family members, our jobs, our schools, our pensions and the perilous state of the national economy. Jesus taught us to be anxious for nothing. And so we ask you to help us to roll all our fears onto you our Heavenly Father. Help us to do this again and again as fears surface once more, confident that you want to hear us and bear our burdens for us. Help us to trust in you with all our hearts, not lean on our own meagre resources. We want to pray especially for young people and for our elders. Students have missed months of education in schools and universities and will be anxious about consequences on exam results, maybe affecting their futures. <clears throat> Many young workers may well find that their jobs have disappeared and face a time of high unemployment. We pray especially for all those whose home situations cannot compensate for all that they have lost at this difficult time. We ask that you would intervene for them and bring about good in their lives out of all this trouble. For the very oldest people who've been even more isolated than usual, as social activities such as cameo and afternoon fellowship have had to close and families have had to stay away, we ask that they would be growing ever closer to you as their rock in this time of trouble. Protect each one of them from the virus, we pray. Calm the fears of those finding this especially frightening. And may they be blessed by the care of those 
who bring their shopping and make phone calls and messages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And beyond the general situation, a prayer for people we know need our prayers. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are in all kinds of need. Those who are unwell, or waiting for surgery or investigations that have been postponed. Those too afraid to go to the surgery. We pray especially for those we know in care homes and for the staff who work there. In a moment of quiet, we name the people on our hearts before you. We lift all these people to you, Lord, asking that they would know your comfort, trust in your power, and be aware that your everlasting arms are underneath them in all that they are facing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, turning our thoughts away from our own problems, let's pray for our brothers and sisters in the persecuted church. Father, we pray for all those Christians who live in lands where your church is unwelcome, where they cannot meet together openly to worship you and have fellowship together. Lord, we ask that you would give all of them your special protection and blessing. May they know securely that whatever trials and dangers they face, nothing can surpass the great blessing of knowing you as their Lord and Saviour. Help us, Lord, who can worship you openly and in safety, never to forget that we have brothers and sisters in your worldwide family who do not enjoy our security. And help us to continue to pray for them and support them in whatever way we can. Help us, too, to remember that we, with them, have the same blessing of knowing the Lord Jesus as Lord and Saviour through all difficulties that we may be facing at this time. Merciful Father, accept all these prayers in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And we're going to have a notice slot this week. We don't always, but we're going to this week. Got a couple of things uh, to share with you. Um, firstly, just a reminder <clears throat> that all three of our churches are currently open at least part of the time for private prayer at the moment. Wardhurst is open on Wednesday and Friday morning. Sorry, on Monday and Friday mornings and Wednesday afternoons. Stonegate is open on Wednesday afternoons and Sunday mornings and Tidebrook is open daily nine till six. We're also planning to restart Sunday services from the beginning of August. There's a lot of work that needs to be done in order to ensure that that can happen safely and smoothly and that's going on at the moment so we'll keep you posted about developments there. Now we've mentioned once or twice during lockdown about the work that Carolyn Cottage has done uh, to support our community during these very challenging times. So here's Tony Buckley with an update. Tony is, I guess, unofficially the leader of the team leaders of the volunteers at the cottage. Here's Tony. Hello. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Tony Buckley and I'm a member of the Sacred Heart Catholic Church. I've been involved with the running of Carillon Cottage since it opened in August 2001, which has been a great privilege and has brought many blessings along the way. 
Over the years, we felt that there were groups in the community that we were failing to reach uh, for one reason or another. But the coronavirus lockdown changed all that and became the perfect opportunity for us to engage with more people in the local area. When we saw posts on Facebook from people asking how could they help, we quickly posted a message ourselves saying that Carillon Cottage was coordinating the volunteer effort in and around the Wadhurst area and inviting people to contact us, which they did. Uh, it was amazing. Over 150 people uh, contacted us and volunteered to help in one way or another. At the same time, we put out messages to those who needed help, inviting them to contact us. And again, they did in huge numbers. In the early weeks of the lockdown, we were dealing with, on average, 50 requests from people for uh, prescription delivery, for shopping, uh, and all sorts of other help that was required. Over the last 11, 12 weeks, we have um, delivered over 250 prescriptions. We've delivered shopping and hearing aid batteries to over 200 people. And we've done other essential tasks, too numerous to list, but things like posting letters, uh, collecting newspapers, um, along with the occasional drive to the surgery or to a hospital appointment. And along the way, we've earned the nickname of the Carry On Cottage, which has been quite something. We're currently making arrangements to reopen Carillon Cottage, although to start with it will be for uh, probably only three mornings a week. We're also looking at ways to build on the experiences of the last three months by encouraging those who have volunteered and those we have helped to stay in touch. And I'd like to ask you today to pray for us as we go through this process that the Lord will guide us in our mission to serve the whole community of Wadhurst, Stonegate and Tidebrook. Isn't that wonderful? And I'd like to add my personal thanks to everybody who's done so much uh, for our community through Carolyn Cottage uh, over these months of lockdown. Because Carolyn Cottage really is our churches seeking to serve our communities and to live out that commandment of Jesus, to love our neighbours as ourselves. So now the theme of this service has been about praise and adoration of our Lord. And we're going to conclude with that wonderful hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Slow to chide and swift to bless
gently bears us, rescues us from all our foes. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, widely as His mercy flows. Angels help us to peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. So we do hope you've enjoyed this morning's service and will join us again next week. Next week we'll be continuing the theme of prayer and we'll be thinking about petition, otherwise known as praying for ourselves. As always, prayer ministry is on offer this Sunday morning, 10.45 to 11.30. And this week it's Steve and Anne. So if you would like to be prayed for, or if there's someone or something you would like prayed for, do give them a call. And so until next time. Keep safe, keep well and keep in touch. God bless. Mm -hmm.